I've always been fascinated by birds. Uh, I think they're some of the most remarkable of all creatures on earth. It's not uh, any stretch to say that uh, any topic about birds to me is very interesting. And I wanted to do my special area for the uh, honors class on the origin of birds from some of the recent uh, data that's been collected that really shows that one of the myths that you often hear in schools, whether it be high school, uh, middle school, or even college, is that birds are dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs did not all go extinct during the last mass extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous period, that birds are still present here on Earth. There's over 10,000 species of birds, and birds are dinosaurs. They're called avian dinosaurs. So my talk this morning is going to focus on that and some of the evidence as to why birds like this American crow are dinosaurs. And it's going to talk about the unique feature of birds, which is feathers, like you see these black feathers on this crow. But the fact that when feathers first came about in birds, they were not used for flight. And when feathers came about as a structure, they were primarily used for insulation and mating displays. Charles Darwin, when he published his uh, monumental book called On the Origin of Species in 1859, he proposed that for each group of organisms, there would be a set of transitional fossils that would eventually be found that would show the evolutionary sequence uh, for that group of organisms. And right after he published his book, a fossil was found in Germany called Archaeopteryx, which means ancient feather or ancient wing. So in 1861, a whole specimen was found in Germany, and it was thought to be a bird. It was thought to be an, a link between birds and reptiles, showing a transition between a reptile and a modern bird. Today, Archaeopteryx is considered to be a non-avian dinosaur. Uh, it is not considered to be a modern bird, but it is considered to be very closely related to modern birds because it has hollow bones from the fossils that have been found. It was feathered. It was able to fly, or at least was thought to be able to fly. So the fossils of Archaeopteryx are dated back to the uh, Jurassic period, which is known as the age of dinosaurs. When Archaeopteryx was found in Germany, it stimulated a lot of interest for looking at some of the other fossils that were known from that period of time in the mid to late 1800s. And a scientist named Thomas Huxley he proposed that a theropod dinosaur called Compsognathus was related to modern birds. From that point in time, there was a lull in research. Until the 1960s, some fossils were found here in the United States, one of them being found by a scientist from Yale University, uh, John Ostrom, and he named it Deinonychus, and it stimulated interest in the concept that birds were dinosaurs. So from the 1800s until the mid-1900s was really a lull in research in the evolution of birds or the origin of birds. But when John Ostrom found the fossil called Deinonychus, it really stimulated research here in the U.S. and a a scientist out in Montana named Jack Horner, he, he uh, really conclusively uh, showed that birds were dinosaurs in the early 1980s with a fossil that he found called Myasaura. Uh, this particular fossil showed that there were dinosaurs that nested in colonies. Uh, they would nest yearly in the same area and come back to that area year after year. Uh, they showed what is called philopatry, which birds today, modern birds today do. And he showed that these 
dinosaurs would feed their young and care for their young for a certain period of time, which you often see as one of the unique characteristics of modern birds today. So by the early 1980s, the consensus in the scientific community, the, the paleontologists that studied birds and bird fossils, was that birds were theropod dinosaurs. And if you think of theropod dinosaurs, probably the most common one that you would think of is Tyrannosaurus rex. And you might say, how in the world is T. rex related to a bird? Well, let me give you some evidence for that. T. rex had hollow bones, as modern birds do today. Uh, T. rex on its feet had three toes pointing forward and one toe pointing backward, which almost all modern birds have that feature today. Uh, think of a chicken. Uh, T. rex did not have feathers, but uh, other theropod dinosaurs did. If you were to look at the vertebrae in the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex, you would see that, it, that its neck would be S-shaped. And that's very characteristic of modern birds today. So there are pieces of evidence to support the concept that Tyrannosaurus rex is more related, if you will, to modern birds than it is to other types of dinosaurs that are now all extinct. I mentioned the feather, that feathers and wings were first developed in dinosaurs, and they were first developed in dinosaurs that could not fly. Uh, a feather is nothing more than a modification of the skin. Uh, it is made primarily of the protein keratin, and it was first used for, again, insulation, mating displays, uh, territorial uh, displays to mark boundaries for where males would want to protect for reproductive purposes uh, and so forth. So the feather and the wing and their use in flight did not develop until the latter part of the the end of the Jurassic period and the beginning of the Cretaceous period. So there were theropod dinosaurs that could fly, and one example would have been Archaeopteryx. And this concept in biology where a characteristic changes its function over time is called a co-option or an exaptation. So it is possible that Feathers, and we see this in ostrich and kiwi and other flightless birds today, that their feathers could never be used for flight because they aren't connected in a series of barbs and barbules to where they could actually create lift and so forth. So here is a picture of Cos compsognathus. It is considered to have very hair-like feathers. Uh, it's considered to have been hollow-boned and bipedal walking on the hind legs, and to have had a very long tail with vertebrae extending from the pelvis onward. We would refer to these types of dinosaurs as non-avian dinosaurs, non-bird dinosaurs. So, Deinonychus looked like uh, a bird like you would think of a, maybe a blue jay, or maybe a bird with a long tail. Uh, it had very sharp claws on its legs, and it used those claws to slash its prey, and then it often ate its prey when the prey was still alive. So it was considered to be a very highly carnivorous uh, dinosaur. It had claws on the ends of its wings, and its wings were considered to be so small that it did not have the capacity to fly. Mayasara was a theropod dinosaur, with some modern bird characteristics, such as uh, the nesting in colony uh, behavior, the parental care of the young. The young supposedly had an egg tooth to help them break through the shell. So, and unlike uh, some reptiles that you think of today, like snakes and turtles, the shell was hard, and the young had to crack through the shell to get out of it. So, so it had what would be called an egg tooth to do so. 
there really has not been a linear sequence of fossils that have been found since Archaeopteryx was found in, the, in 1861. The fossils have actually been found that basically go all over the place in terms of characteristics. Uh, there were fossils that have been found since 1861 to the present time of modern birds, and they have been dated back to the Cretaceous period. Uh, there are fossils of modern birds that are very similar to ducks and geese and chickens and the flightless birds of today like the ostrich. Uh, there are fossils that have been found that have been of a toothless bird but lacking the ability to fly with claws on the ends of its wings. There have been fossils found of bird-like dinosaurs with teeth, claws, but the ability to fly. And there have been fossils found with, of dinosaurs with teeth in their beak and with the ability to not fly. So since Archaeopteryx was found, the number and diversity of fossils that have primarily been found in China, it's really amazing. And most of them have been found from 1990 until today. So what they've shown is that the evolution of, to modern birds has not been linear at all. It has been very non-linear. And that the birds that we see today represent those birds that did not have teeth. Uh, they had feathers that could fly. They had wings large enough and a small enough body size that most all of them could fly. And they were the only members of the dinosaur group that survived. The theropod dinosaurs that were present at the end of the Cretaceous period went extinct. Uh, the size of the asteroid that hit the Earth about 66 million years ago is considered to have been about six miles wide from the crater that's been found off the coast of the uh, Yucatan in Mexico. So the birds that survived and they were, are considered to be modern birds. Uh, they are considered to be dinosaurs. And there were four lineages of birds that were living at the time of this mass extinction event that survived. And they are the birds that gave rise to the ostrich and the emu and the rhea and the kiwi that are flightless today. Uh, they're birds like ducks and geese, the waterfowl. They're birds like chickens and turkeys, the land-dwelling fowl. And they would be, the largest group that survived would be called the modern birds or the songbirds, those that have the ability to produce elaborate songs and calls. To end, the dinosaurs, the reptiles, if you will, the dinosaurs that are reptiles, all for the most part went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period with this large asteroid collision. And as Jack Horner said, that's kind of a fortunate thing for us if you think of their primarily large size and their carnivorous nature. Uh, it would be very hard for us to survive here on Earth and live with them. Uh, Jack Horner also said uh, it's really a blessing that modern birds survived because they provide us and they provide the Earth with such magnificent beauty Thank you.